Today we review the career of one of the most significant British engineers of the 20th century, now almost forgotten. Harry Mundy was born on the 15th of January 1916 in Coventry, Warwickshire. He attended King Henry VIII School in Coventry and then served a mechanical apprenticeship with Alvis, where as a young draftsman, he even helped design the gearbox for Alvis's 1270 and 3 litre models. In 1936, he left Alvis to join English Racing Automobiles, ERA, in Bourne, Lincolnshire. At ERA, he met fellow engineer Walter Wally Hassan, who became a lifelong friend and collaborator. When ERA wound down in 1939, Mundy returned to Coventry to work at the Morris Engines factory, contributing to pre-war racing engine development. With the outbreak of World War II, Mundy enlisted in the Royal Air Force and served as an engineering officer. He rose to the rank of Wing Commander, a senior RAF rank, indicating that his work during the war was both technically significant and held in high esteem. His training and experience in high-performance engines were put to use on aircraft engines and related technologies during the war years, although specific details of his postings remain scarce. This military service interrupted his civilian career but broadened his engineering experience considerably. After the war, Mundy re-entered the automotive industry. In 1946, he became the head of the design office at British Racing Motors BRM. In that capacity, he helped develop BRM's ambitious V16 Grand Prix engine, a 1.5-litre supercharged overhead can design, intended to rival the Alfa Romeo and Ferrari Grand Prix engines of the day. The BRM V16 was a complex 16-cylinder engine delivering around 600-plus brake horsepower at high RPM. Mundy's practical engineering approach reportedly kept BRM's design more realistic. Nevertheless, Delays plagued the BRM program. In 1950, he moved on from BRM to Coventry Climax Engines Limited, becoming chief designer. Coventry Climax was owned by Leonard Lee and headed up by co-engineer Walter Hassan. Here, he helped pioneer an ultra-lightweight overhead cam engine series. The first of these was the 1020 CCFW, or featherweight engine developed for a government portable fire pump contract. The aluminium FW used a single overhead cam, chain driven from an intermediate shaft, three crank bearings, and carefully shaped combustion chambers, with the fuel air swirl design Mundy later described. When the first FW engine prototype was successfully tested, Leonard Lee, recognising Mundy's brilliant design and the engine's future potential, immediately doubled Mundy's salary on the spot, a moment witnessed and later confirmed by Walter Hassan. This dramatic gesture underscored the value of Mundy's work to the company. Displayed at the 1953 London Motor Show, the FW's high power-to-weight ratio caught the eye of racing men and Coventry Climax, and a delighted Leonard Lee was persuaded to adapt it for cars. Mundy oversaw the evolution of the FW design into a series of racing engines. The first automotive variant was the FWA, 1,097 cubic centimetres, with strengthened crank and higher compression, up to approximately 8.8 .8 to 1 initially. By 1956, further development raised the FWA's output toward 90 horsepower at 7,000 revolutions per minute via higher compression and improved head design. Coventry Climax then bored the engine out to 1460 cubic centimetres, adding a fourth main bearing, to create the FWB, the 1.5-litre Formula 2 engine. Lotus used the FWB in its 11 and 17 sports races. Coventry Climax also built the 1,216 cc FWE for the fiberglass Lotus Elite, with up to 105 horsepower in race tune. Later, the FPF series 2.0 to 2.5 litres was developed, which powered Cooper and Lotus Grand Prix cars. Coventry Climax's engines dominated small-capacity racing. They won the Formula One World Championship in 1959 and 1960, with Jack Brabham Lotus Cooper Climax, and again in 1963 and 1965, 
with Jim Clark's Lotus Climax. In total, Coventry Climax engines captured four F1 titles, three Formula 2 titles, numerous sports car victories, including Le Mans class wins, and 40 GP race victories. This golden era was largely due to Mundy's lightweight engine designs and his collaboration with Hassan. Mundy would later recall how he applied Sir Harry Ricardo's swirl chamber principles to the FW head, helping explain its efficiency. Mundy left Coventry Climax in the mid-1950s after guiding this engine programme to its peak. The Coventry Climax company was later sold to Jaguar, but by then Mundy had already moved into a new phase of his career. In 1955, Mundy took a surprising turn by becoming technical editor of the Autocar magazine. In this role, he analysed road and racing cars for a wide audience and kept abreast of industry trends. While at Autocar and afterwards, Mundy's spare time engineering work had major impact. The Lotus Ford twin cam engine was one highlight. Launched in 1962, the twin cam used Mundy's all-aluminum double-overhead cam cylinder head on a short Ford 1500cc block. In original form, it displaced 1.5 litres and produced about 105 to 108 horsepower in stage 3 tune. This powerful lightweight engine transformed Lotus road cars like the Elan and Cortina. The Lotus twin cam Cortina, 1600cc version, became an icon of 1960s racing and rallying. Mundy's head design, cast by Bermide and finished by JAP, enabled Lotus to achieve a performance edge. The twin cam was also used in competition with success. It was paid for by Mundy's lump sum fee, but beyond personal finance, this project cemented his legacy. Tens of thousands of twin cam engines were built for Lotus vehicles, an estimated 34,000 units. Mundy's Coventry Climax engines and Lotus contributions helped several British marks compete with the best of Europe. His work on the Hillman Imp engine, a variant of the FW series, and on Lotus sports cars, like the Lotus 11 sports racer, further show his diverse influence in British motorsport. In 1963, Jaguar purchased Coventry Climax and hired its staff, bringing Walter Hassan back on board at Jaguar again. Hassan persuaded Mundy to rejoin engineering, and Mundy became Jaguar's chief development engineer for engines. With Bill Haynes, Jaguar's chief engineer, Claude Bailey and Hassan, Mundy helped complete the design of Jaguar's new V12 engine. This unit was a 60-degree V12 originally conceived with quad-cam racing heads, but was produced in single overhead cam per bank form to meet cost and packaging goals. The production V12 displaced 5,343 cubic centimetres and produced about 272 brake horsepower, debuting in the 1971 Series 3 E-Type, announced March 1971. Mundy later presented a detailed lecture at the Institute of Mechanical Engineers in 1971 on the V12's design, explaining choices such as using duplex roller chains, rather than timing belts, to drive the cams and discussing the planned fuel injection system. Early electronic fuel injection by Behringer was tested, but proved unreliable for production. Jaguars launched with SU carburetors and later Lucas fuel injection. But we can get adequate sized valves in for um, our breathing and we've got extremely good low and middle range torque. And there is another advantage of this uh, single overhead camshaft layout is one of weight. Uh, as you know, we did a twin cam and a single cam version in the development of this engine. And with this single cam layer, we save 22 pounds per head assembly, yeah. nearly half a hundredweight on the engine. Yeah. The Jaguar V12 was produced until the early 1990s and powered many Jaguars, such as the XJ12 sedans, XJS coupes, and even Le Mans winning race cars in later tune. Mundy remained at Jaguar overseeing the V-12 programme until his retirement in 1980. 
After 1980, Mundy retired from full-time work but continued consulting. He even sketched out advanced ideas like a W12 Trident engine for potential Formula One use, though it was never built. Harry Mundy died on the 5th of April 1988 at the age of 72 at his home in Kenilworth. He is remembered as one of Britain's great post-war engine designers. Engines he helped create powered multiple Grand Prix World Championships and countless race victories. His innovations, from the featherweight Climax 4s to the smooth Jaguar V12, had lasting impact on British motorsport and car design. Today, enthusiasts and historians cite Mundy's role in those classic engines whenever Britain's mid-century racing heritage is celebrated. This has been a production by Curious Jag. Please like and subscribe.